to our blog today. Uh, today is Thursday, August the 27th. Um, I'm excited to have some people that you've seen and some you haven't seen today to talk to you about again about Presswell High School. Brandon, Brandon Standridge is the assistant principal at the high school and the athletic director. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you for having us and, and getting our message out and, and getting information to, for the community. We appreciate it. Thanks again. Thanks for being here. And we have the new principal of the high school, Jenny Collins. Jenny, can you tell us some about yourself? Sure. Yeah, I would be happy to. Hello, everybody. Um, I am actually from the Valley, so moved back to Cresswell. I'm from Oak Ridge originally, um, have been in the Dells for the last few years, um, have worked in many different aspects in the helping profession, um, and I'm just really excited to bring all of that here to Cresswell and to serve the community and the students at the high school. Well, I noticed that in your background, that you are a family, marriage and family counselor. I am, was, practiced marriage and family therapy. Yeah, yeah. but it definitely doesn't lose its um, value in yes. any form of communication. So, um, yeah. Well, it's nice exciting for me to know. Thanks. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, what I'd like to do is tell you some things that, that I think I know, because I watched the forum last week, and uh, I thought it was very educational. I think you guys did a fantastic job. Thank you. And uh, I know that wasn't easy to pull off, but uh, with with all the avalanche of, of information that's hitting us all the time as parents and as community members, I want to tell you what I think I know and you can tell me I'm right or wrong or, or whatever. Is that okay? Absolutely. All right. So number one, I think I know that at high school this year, instead of having seven periods, seven classes, we're going to have four. Is that correct? Yeah, do you want me to do that one? Sure. Take that. We're going to share. So, <laughs> yes, we're going to have four classes per term. That doesn't mean that students will only have four classes the whole year. It just means for the first semester, we're going to focus on those four classes, mm -hmm. and students will earn one credit in a semester versus one credit over the whole year. Oh, okay. So uh, that that means that, uh, if, I, if I understand correctly, in the schedule, you're going to have an hour and a half of class in the morning, which would be divided into two specific classes, and then kind of a question and answer time with teachers being in their offices, and then lunch, and then repeating that in the afternoon. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, one of the, the things we, we got from the state as far as guidance and then, you know, talking with the admin team was important for our high school kids to have a little bit of a break. And if they're, you know, mm -hmm. on the screen and doing a bunch of Zoom stuff, you know, we didn't want to have that be four hours in a row and then go do four hours of homework. So it's, you know, you have first and second period, get a little break, get a chance to walk around, you know, we called it kind of a wellness time, get lunch, get some food in you, and then come back and do the same thing in the afternoon um, and really space that out. And then having, um, so that, that's a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday schedule. And then Wednesday, uh, we set aside for individualized time. So if you need a little bit extra help, a little bit maybe more one-on-one -on -one, um, and some things that may be, you know, in class, they don't necessarily have, you know, the ability to, to, to tackle for you. You can get that, that help on that Wednesday schedule, too. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And I would add just that middle of the day time, too. Mm -hmm. I think as a student, when we need help, it's nice to have it in the moment that we need help. And if all the help was in the morning or all the help was in the afternoon, then you're waiting all day to get help or you have to wait till the next morning to get help. So if you have that time in the middle of the day to connect with your teachers, then you don't have to wait yeah. for that question. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I understand that the curriculum that the high school will use this year is a CELUS and that that's an online, um, an online education process that will involve, for most of our students that use the comprehensive distance learning, will involve both ed teaching from our teachers as well as then the, uh, I guess, the assignments through a CELUS. And I understand you have some history in that. You have some experience with Acellus. Yeah. Can yeah. you tell us? I can. So we used um, Acellus at Duper and uh, they're also still using that and really gearing up to make that um, a, a deeper um, curriculum use. I'm not really sure what the word is I'm looking for. It'll come to me. Mm -hmm. But um, 
So we used it for credit recovery. Teachers used it to supplement in the classroom. Teachers um, used it in our after school program um, to do some coding and things with the younger kids. So we do intend to use it very similarly here. Um, and you're correct, teachers can draw from a Cellus as a curriculum. Um, and they can also just draw from their own curriculum base that they've had. Because we have teachers here that have been doing a great job for several years and have, have their classes dialed in and understand the standards and what they need to present. So a Cellus will just be another tool that they can use to bring that um, information to students, okay. a way for kids to interact um, outside of the classroom as well. So credit recovery, it'll be used in um, Cresswell Online Academy, uh, and it'll be used for supplementary um, curriculum K-12. Okay, and then I understand that every student will, will have to have their own computer, their own device, and that if they don't have one, you're going to provide one for them. Is that correct? Yeah, we're able this year to be a one-to-one -one school district, so every we have a device for every student. Um, unlike the spring where we were a little short, so we're excited about that that addition to our district. Um, this doesn't mean that if you went out and po purchased a Chromebook or purchased a laptop that you have to take one. Obviously, if you have the ability at, at your home to have that, you don't need to take a device. But um, unlike the spring where we could you could get by with an iPad, you could buy with a tablet, maybe on your phone doing some work. Um, that's not going to be you know, possible this, this fall. So the idea is that if you need a device and it's more than just your phone or tablet, then um, we'll have days and times the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th to, to come to your school and, and pick those up and you will have those access to those. So uh, you'll be able to get a Chromebook um, from the district. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, with the forum that you did last week and then with what you said now, I think you've done an, an outstanding job of kind of outlining overall the, the, the situation that, that's going on. And there's a lot of specifics that we could talk about um, that I think will will come through on the on the website, the high school, the school website. Um, so I want to kind of jump away from those to some of the specifics that some of parents have been asking me to ask you. Is that okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Um, when will the kids, and you mentioned 9th, 10th, and 11th of September to come get their devices, when will the kids get their specific uh, schedules and what's going to be the protocol if they need to change their schedules? Um, we, well, we can tag team. Yeah. We won't arm wrestle for it. <laughs> um, we uh, finished our letter and we will be sending that out to families and it kind of outlines, um, there's the class schedule that you talked about earlier, the two hours in the morning, hour and a half in the afternoon. Um, and with that, it talks about um, picking up the information that they need um, at the school when they can get their devices, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so if students don't have the ability to get their schedule online prior to those pickup days, the comprehensive distance learning distribution days, <laughs> then they um, would be able to pick up their schedules at that time. Um, I think the high school kids are pretty used to getting their schedules from a phone or getting it online. So I'm certain they're already looking at those schedules. Um, and actually, Brandon, maybe you want to talk about the link that Ms. Stifler put on our webpage so that students can reach out to her about schedule changes. Yeah, we uh, just opened up so the students can see their schedules yesterday. Um, so if you haven't checked in with students, check in your home access. Um, you can check your schedule there. Um, and also if you go to our- okay, Let me interrupt. Yes. Okay, so I looked at some schedules for my son way back in the in the in the summer there were seven classes well that all went away and then i looked and there was an initial four class schedule and i noticed that went away mm -hmm. so you're telling me that the, the the schedules that we find online now when we sign in for our child those are what you're really wanting us to have yes, yes. Those, are, those will be accurate yeah. as of as of moving to the to the new school year Cool. Um, there's a link on the home page of the website mm -hmm. um, that you go through and Mrs. Stifler has a calendar if you need to request a schedule change. Essentially, um, you go on there and, and look at times that are available and schedule a Zoom and she'll meet with you via Zoom and figure out what class you want, what class is available and, and work those you know, things out just like normal. Um, okay. Instead of you know, doing a schedule time in her office like you would in a normal year, uh, it'll, it'll be uh, via Zoom. So there, cool. I think those are starting Monday. So you can go in and look at that calendar now. Cool. Actually. All right, well, that's exciting. Yeah. I can't wait. I'll get. I'll get there. <laughs> um, I also had a question, and it, several others have asked me. That you're going to have four classes, 
and each class is going to last 45 minutes. And, and yet we're going to have an entire year's worth in a specific class, we're gonna have a year's worth of subject matter in a semester. And that sounds like a lot. So the, are the teachers gonna tell the students every assignment that's coming during that 45 minutes and then expect the work to be done after? Or is it gonna be where there's quite a bit of, of work that the students are gonna to have to do with new material that they have to do outside of class? Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah. sense? Go first. Okay. Go first. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's definitely a new learning process for teachers um, and for students, how that information gets delivered. Of course, new information, we never want students to try to tackle on their own. So that 45 minutes really would be set aside for this is something new that I need to teach you. And then any applied learning that comes from that, that practice that we need to get better at things, um, the homework, if you will, will be done outside of that 45 minutes. So I wouldn't right. say that students would have a great deal of work, but they are gonna have some learning that needs to happen because we are condensing and it is only 45 minutes. Yes. Um, and, and you know we designed the schedule to, to work um, for the whole year or it, if and when we're able to go back. But um, the other piece of that is that we will ask teachers to really kind of look at the standards mm -hmm. um, and work towards those power standards, those mm -hmm. things that we really need kids to understand and walk away yeah. from. Um, and some of the fluff that we get to do in a normal school year may not be a part of comprehensive gotcha. distance learning. So okay. yeah, definitely new stuff introduced in that 45 minutes with the applied practice outside of that. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, and essentially, I mean, you know, the part of that 45 minutes is the importance of the social interaction and, and mm -hmm. you know, doing small groups and breakout sessions with, with those things that we get. And really looking at CDLs, how do we move the classroom virtually, essentially? And so the things that we, we, we want to do with, with building culture mm -hmm. and um, you know having our students you know get together and work through those problems together, we're still you know working on doing. Um, and and like Mrs. Collins said, you know essentially one of the main reasons we did the four by four was planning the whole year. So mm -hmm. the idea that you know we're CDL now, the hope is second quarter we go to hybrid. The four by four is really going to allow us to to maneuver the hybrid guidelines that the state has has laid out for us with the cohorting because we're not yes. moving around as much. Gotcha. And so you know, essentially, when we get to that point, we're gonna we'll extend the class the classroom time to incorporate that. You know, because you have the forty five minutes, but you also have the office hours. You also have the Wednesday off, um, mm -hmm. in, in doing some some of those things. So those adds up yes. over over the course of that, just not that forty five minute time where we go back to hybrid. We'll extend it to 80, 85 minutes, and then that time gets kind of you know embedded in there too. So well, and I appreciate you bringing up hybrid, which is kind of the next step. I hope, but Let's do. we're certainly not <laughs> yes. assured of that. I mean, no, no we're not. Right now, no. this is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I notice that uh, in a normal year, our students have seven classes, um, and now that a class is going to be done in a semester that normally would have been would have been done in a year. Um, that's for this semester, for next semester. That sounds like eight classes. And one of the positives, if there's a positive in this, is they get an extra class in a year. Is that accurate? It's, it could be accurate on an individual basis. Um, so the core classes definitely fit that. You're going to complete it in a semester and get one credit. Mm -hmm. Um, with the elective classes, those may actually stretch over the full semester rather than changing mm -hmm. at nine weeks. Mm -hmm. And so kids will for sure get the seven that they forecasted for that would be a normal school year. Um, and in some cases, for some grades, some electives, they may be shortened to nine weeks and nine weeks. Uh, gotcha. So they would get extra. Um, but as to not overwhelm kids, and because you, we only have so many teachers, so many yep. hours in the day, the electives will also stay on the same 0.5 for the whole semester. Okay, good. A little right. confusing. Another question that a lot of our parents at our church are wanting to know is we've had a successful music program for years here at Cresswell. Um, what's gonna happen this year? What's it gonna look like with the music program, with choir and band and that sort of thing? Sure. Me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy to see the lifeline. I mean, you're like right down the, the center aisle here. Um, 
So we are working with Miss Green, um, who is the music teacher, both for the middle school and the high school, to try to establish some type of program that continues to move forward with all of the efforts that she has made um, in the community. And of course, it's going to look different, and that's really hard and probably heartbreaking for her and for kids that you know have been in band and and appreciate that. Um, we we of course want the program to continue it's not going to look the same mm -hmm. during comprehensive distance learning but we will have a music program and we're actively dialoguing about how that's going to look for students and um, what the performance piece can look like and and how do we create classes maybe at different levels so yep i'm going to practice i'm going to turn in um, performance recordings i really want to keep moving forward with my instrument to maybe I'm going to practice my instrument, but I'm not really interested in turning in recordings to I want to take a music appreciation class. Right. So we're, we're trying to figure out what that can look like during comprehensive distance learning, mm -hmm. but still have the program keep the momentum that okay. it's developed. So, so if I'm, what I'm hearing is that even as that course begins at the school year, it's going to probably change and develop as the semester goes. I, yeah, okay. I, I would hope so because we, we certainly want to give kids the opportunity to get together and to play their instruments. I mean, yeah. even if we have to wrap a tuba in bubble wrap <laughs> or a, what was it, clarinets were put into nylons for Whatever. part of the, you know, to keep the spray from happening. Um, Whatever yeah, it takes. We want to yeah, make it work. That's the one thing we're, we're looking at too is, you know, looking at the guidance from um, the NFHS, the National Federation of High Schools. Is doing right now they have a, a comprehensive set of lab tests that they're doing to see what the best uh, course of action is yeah. um, whether it's you know right now there's you know talks about like you know if you enter an exit room you wear a mask and then you wear a mask if you're not playing and so they're they're working yeah. on what the best yeah. what the best scenario is and we keep getting constant feedback on that and keep getting um, articles and, and those results and so as we mm -hmm. you know as we get them as the state gets them they're incorporating that guidance into their their new their new revision. So we're we're you know keeping up to date on that as well um, cool. to see what we we can do as a district and what what the best practices are going to be. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I'm anxious to see how that goes. And the nylon piece. I mean that's <laughs> that's real. That's part of the study. Yeah, so yes. the legs, eggs. I'm dating myself. Maybe a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna have a resurgence of the uh, nylon industry. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, other questions that I've had asked me was, you have other hands-on electives like ceramics or welding, uh, the woodworking. What's going to happen with, with those particular classes? Mm -hmm. um, essentially, you know, we're going to do what we can the first quarter. I mean, we talked to our teachers about if we, if we can send home kits and, and do certain things. Um, I just, you know, I saw one of my teacher friends in California, they have a little Ziploc bags and a little steam kit. So we're you know, talking about different things like that. Um, when Ms. Stifler and, and us set up the schedule, part of it was we set up a lot of things that we knew were going to be more hands-on for the second quarter. Oh. Um, so the idea that, you know, say like, you know, um, ceramics, ceramics, you know, like, you know, we could do drawing uh -huh. virtually. It's a little easier to do like you know, somebody drawing classes virtually, do ceramics second quarter with the hope that when we go hybrid, we're able to, to have people on, on campus gotcha. and, and not really have to transform that class, just kind of modify it a little bit. So we're, we're working on that and that's, you know, kind of our, our lens. Um, same thing with like the second semester, we, we put some things off the second semester that may be a little bit more hands-on to okay. with the hope that we're back in school and able to do it more, more like normal. Well, mm -hmm. and, as you all know, we are full of hope. Yeah. <laughs> we are full we of Christians hope. have a lot of hope, so I can hope for our public school too, so that's cool. Yes. Um, one of the core classes is PE. Uh, how's that going to work this time? Uh, virtually, uh -huh. um, we. Um, I've similarly Brandon had mentioned that. Excuse me, Mr. Standridge, I'll put on you, Brandon. It's okay. Um, it's just us. Yeah. Okay, perfect. There you go. Um, not the not the whole wide world. We are known no. for Grammys. There's no way that's a, an Oscar. Yeah. Only um, my mother-in-law thinks the whole world sees this. Everybody else knows. There's you know. Like oh, we're gonna make it. We're, we're gonna make it. It's well, gonna go. Oh. Um, so. Um, we we schedule classes so that. Hopefully, mm. when we get back, uh, we'll be able to maybe have PE in person. So yeah. freshmen, for example, will do health online 
hold PE okay. until the second half of the term, oh, and then okay. maybe we can get them in and ah. get them active. That being said, we need to have an activity component to our comprehensive distance learning. So we will, like yoga can be done online. That's yeah. one of our activities. Yeah. Um, we'll continue to do those sorts of things that we can do online, yes. but we'll put together some fun activities to get kids out, get them moving. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, what about extracurricular clubs? Are they going to be allowed to meet uh, virtually as well, or no? Yeah, I mean, we, as you know, the club scenario is, is a, a virtual. I know um, my teachers are excited, and we'll, we'll get touch touch base with them next week when they get back to work and mm -hmm. um, get a plan for that. But um, yeah, there's a ton of our clubs that are able to, to meet virtually and um, at least start that that process. I know leadership. We've had a couple of meetings uh, working on a, a virtual freshman orientation yeah. uh, for the freshmen, and then you know. If we get to hybrid, you know, then an in-person version of that. Yes. Um. So. So yeah. You know, it's, you know, not ideal, but but they'll get a chance to, to meet and, okay. and have that yeah. camaraderie and have that have that connection. Okay. Um, you're not only the assistant principal; you're the athletic director. Tell us about directing athletics right now. What's going to happen? Um, directing athletics is is a difficult situation. There's a lot of moving parts for sure. Um. So the idea right now is that OSA has moved the calendar. Essentially, winter sports, basketball, wrestling, and cheer have been moved. Um, they're going to do essentially three seasons of seven weeks of competition. Mm -hmm. um, so winter sports go January, February. Uh, fall sports then come back and do a, a late February, early March, early April scenario. Um, and then spring sports will go late April into late June. Okay. Um, right now, um, starting August 31st, the USA has a calendar that... Um, schools can, um, if at the district decision, um, hold workouts. We're hopeful that as school starts, we'll be able to start those back up. We, we did those uh, most of June, or I mean, excuse me, most of July, most of August, taking a hiatus for the last couple of weeks, and we're hoping to, to pick those up, um, get those kids back out on a um, essentially plan where we're going to do fall sports one week so they can just focus on fall sports, winter and then spring, and kind of yeah. get them out, get them, you know, physically active, get them, you know, just at least touching touching a basketball, touching a football, touching a soccer ball, um, and and we'll do that for most of the fall. Um, if we get to hybrid the second quarter, then we're able are able to you know November maybe expand that a little bit, um, and then December they'll they'll be able to start practice. So we're yes. like I said, you know, as long as the trajectory stays the same and we're we're on the same kind of wavelength, then that's our hope is that we'll we'll get we'll get workouts started here. Um, the next yeah. couple of weeks, three weeks, and get those okay. kids back out because we know we know how beneficial those for them, and um, you know how much everybody's missing it, and I'm missing it, and you know coaches mm -hmm. are missing it, and, and we just want to want to get back to some some semblance of a little normality yes. to, and, to life. And the yeah. and the athletes are, are missing it <laughs> like crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I hear sure. that every time I go get gas, I hear it all the time. <laughs> um, we're done. Thank you for being here, both of you. And it's awfully good to meet you, Thanks. Jenny. I'm looking forward well. to this. One of the reasons I said it's just us, uh, when you were wondering about calling him Mr. Standridge, or what are we, one of the things that I both, because my wife was a teacher for so many years, I watched, I watched the, the community school relationship alter over the years, mm -hmm. from collaboration to almost competition and uh, sometimes not even fun competition between families and schools. And one of the things that I have appreciated so much about our school district and about uh, our administration has been you're real people, you're not just people with credentials, you're real live human beings that are struggling to make this thing work. So I appreciate you, you coming to talk to us because I want everybody to know they're trying hard. I mean, I know you are, you're just busting it. And I'm proud of you. So thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, thank anyway. You for All right. Take care, everybody. I'll see you. I'll see you later.